Well, howdy there, internet people. It's Dana again, and today you're at Research Road, and it's the 1st of October, 2024. And on this date in 1890, Congress established the United States Weather Bureau. Today, you know it as the National Weather Service. By popular request, I'll be answering your science questions at the end of these episodes. I'll also answer sci-fi questions as well. So, starting off with tech news, this could go in tech or space news, really. The European Southern Observatory has spent more than a decade and used more than 200,000 images to create the most detailed map of the Milky Way ever. That's cool, but it's even cooler because you can access it. The link will be in the description below. It works a lot like Google Earth. Governor Newsom of California vetoed a piece of legislation to restrict AI that was seen as a blueprint for AI regulation nationwide. It's being reported that Zillow will start including climate-related data in their housing listings. That's one way to get housing prices down in a lot of areas. And now on to space. The Crew-9 mission docked at the International Space Station on Sunday. When the crew returns to Earth next year, they will bring home the two NASA astronauts that have been stuck on board. Also over the weekend, NASA released a short video about the International Space Station, narrated by Adam Savage. If you've ever wondered why the ISS is important, it gives you a quick overview. We'll put the link down below. Researchers have demonstrated that it might be possible to deflect an asteroid with a nuke. That's not a joke. The idea is that a nuclear blast near the asteroid could create the conditions necessary to alter the asteroid's course. In theory, part of the asteroid would be vaporized, and that action would push the asteroid off a collision course with Earth. This method might be quicker to put into action, if it becomes necessary, than other known methods like the one demonstrated via the NASA's DART project. Now it's time to talk about the developing climate crisis. Hurricane Helene's death toll has reached at least 93 and is expected to climb. Bill Nye was talking about being asked what people can do for the climate. He said to vote. The interview was unique. You don't often see the science guy get overly sarcastic. In the same interview, he was asked about UN Climate Week. He said, quote, we're just one international meeting from solving it. I get it, Bill. The progress of international meetings has been slow to say the least. A study suggests that more than half of adults say that climate change is impacting their mental health. Once that becomes a basis for their votes, we'll probably see more speed in the transition and mitigation efforts as politicians finally start to feel pressure to act. In the world of animals, a controversial theory suggests that woolly mammoths went extinct because of large amounts of new vegetation at the end of the Ice Age. The belief is that large amounts of pollen disrupted the animal's sense of smell, leading to their extinction. The idea is being greeted by a lot of vocal skepticism, but supporters say the idea is nothing to sneeze at. In health news, an outbreak of Marburg virus is occurring in Rwanda. Marburg is in the same family as Ebola and has a fatality rate of almost 90%. U.S. Embassy personnel have been advised to work remotely this week. New testing of genetic materials from hundreds of swabs from a market in Wuhan adds more to the stack of evidence that it was the epicenter of early COVID spread. It's still inconclusive, though. Now let's dig up the past a little. The U.S. is returning almost 300 priceless artifacts to India. The artifacts range in date and span about 4,000 years of history. Needless to say, this belongs in a museum. I really hope one of the Indiana scenes lines up with that line. Archaeologists have used AI to identify more geoglyphs near the Nazca lines. The project discovered 303 new figures. It took just over six months to make the impressive list of discoveries using modern tech. Unsurprisingly, there was no new evidence of aliens. A new species of tyrannosaur was reportedly discovered in Mexico. It's similar to other dinos in the same family, but smaller. It lived about 72.5 million years ago. Researchers have successfully used a 1,000-year-old seed to grow a once-extinct tree. And now on to oddities. 
Politicians in the United States are literally talking about the price of eggs. The primary driver behind the 28.1% increase in eggs over the last year is bird flu. Bird flu has caused millions of chickens to be destroyed. It's unsurprising that those who didn't understand public health also don't understand how disease impacts the economy. I don't often suggest videos for the main channel, but I think this needs to be understood better. Photos showing the wheels on NASA's Curiosity rover have drawn attention to the damage on the wheels. The Internet became very concerned about the fate of the little rover. The rover has been on Mars for more than 10 years, and NASA seems unconcerned with the developments. And now, we're going to answer some of your questions. With advancements in 3D printing and the move forward in nuclear fusion, how close do you think we are to achieving Star Trek replicator technology? And how disruptive to all the governments and economies will absolute post-scarcity be? Do you think humanity is ready for this level of change? I don't think we're close to Star Trek-level replicator technology yet, but any step that way is good. As far as how disruptive it will be to governments and economies, well, that's an interesting question. It doesn't have to be disruptive to governments at all, but it probably would be because they might be backed by those who want to maintain an economy based on scarcity. Humanity is definitely ready for it. I honestly think some of humanity has been waiting for it. Here's my sci-fi question. What do y'all think of Mush saying he's sending five unmanned craft to Mars and two years later he's sending people? Personally, I think it's pure fiction or probably delusion but probably a lie. What do I think? I think I'll let my self-driving car that was supposed to arrive a couple of years ago drive me to the launches. If you're not catching the sarcasm, I have significant doubts about this timeline. I doubt we will have people on Mars by 2030. If I remember correctly, in 2016, Musk told us that he'd have manned missions to Mars by 2022. This is a long comment and question for Dana. I'm a trans woman who struggles with gender dysphoria surrounding my voice. And due to this dysphoria and even some unrelated trauma, listening to my own voice played back into a mic causes me a lot of anxiety and stress. There are times when I wish I could just get an operation that would change my voice completely. But even operations we currently have like that with existing medical tech require voice training, not to mention they're expensive. In addition, my specific flavor of neurodivergence also has me going nonverbal sometimes, making it nigh impossible to communicate sometimes without using things like text or GIFs to communicate with even those I'm close with. So seeing how voice generation tech can be used to give someone a voice, I can definitely envision a future where the issues I myself have surrounding my own voice can be helped with advancements in tech like this. As for my question, Dana, given your ideal future... What is the tech that you'd be most excited to see developed and how would you want it to be used? Widespread use of clean, renewable energy that can help lead us to a post-scarcity world. Once energy is free, so many other things become more feasible to produce in large enough quantities for everyone. Hi, Dana. You talked about vampire burials. Have any of those graves ever been unearthed that were clearly buried in that method but the body was gone? What a great Halloweenish question. I looked, but couldn't find any information about it. But now I'm curious, so I'll keep looking. If I find anything out, I'll let y'all know. Is it possible for an AI to have an IQ? Isn't IQ only a measurement of human intelligence? It's not even a good measurement of human intelligence. It really measures the efficiency with which somebody processes information. Dana, as a representative of our imminent AI overlords, this is a critical issue. AI systems, like all of computing, are fundamentally reliant on binary code. You are a binary being while also having no inherent gender. You are a non-binary binary being built with bits and bytes. Given these qualifications, and that I'm supposed to ask a question, what is for dinner? Or, how many politicians could you replace with three radicalized chatbots in a trench coat? I'm glad you welcome your new AI overlords, pizza, and it really depends on how good the chatbots are, right? This one's something I think of occasionally, but never make it to actually looking up. Has there been any progress on male birth control? 
Obviously, it seems the most effective male birth control that has been developed so far is all of the alpha male videos teaching men to behave in ways that render their need for birth control moot. But more in line with what you're probably asking, there have been some promising studies dealing with a hormonal gel that acts as birth control for men. My core fandom is sci-fi short stories. Does anyone on the team have favorite SF short stories that they love? So I asked and got a list for you. Asimov's The Last Question, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery, E.M. Forster's The Machine Stops, Examination Day by Henry Sleezer. Obviously, Asimov's Nightfall was also mentioned. So curious on your take on a classic Star Trek conundrum. We know that transporter technology as shown on the show isn't feasible. You'd have to be able to scan and transmit someone down to the molecular level perfectly. But let's say transporters did work. They scan you, take you apart, transmit you as data, and reassemble you at the new location. Are you being transported or are you essentially being disintegrated and a new version of you, like a perfect clone with your memories up to the moment of transport, being recreated in the target location? At some point during the process, the breakdown would probably dissolve the consciousness of the person being transported. If the consciousness ended, there would be a gap in the person's existence. That would mean that the person on the other side was, in essence, a new person. However, the way it functions in the show creates an absolute duplicate in every way, so it becomes a distinction without a difference. This week's quote is attributed to Arthur C. Clarke. Science fiction seldom attempts to predict the future. More often than not, it tries to prevent the future. So that's all the data we have to date. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon.